The Secret Lake by Karen Ingalls Chapter 1 The Gardener Tom's face felt so hot he was sure it was about to explode. The midday sun beat down mercilessly on his back, and the beads of sweat that had long since formed on his forehead began to itch and tickle. But still he dug on. Surely if he kept going there would be a sign. A tuft of silky fur, perhaps, a distant squeak. Or, and this really would be the best, a pair of tiny eyes squinting blindly up towards the daylight. He paused to wipe the trickling sweat with the back of his wrist, then lifted his spade for what felt like the one hundredth time, just as a dark shadow loomed up from behind. A familiar chill travelled down his spine, as, with heart pounding, he swivelled round to meet the piercing stare of the gardener, Charlie Green. "'Now look here, Tom Orkin, I've told you before. I've enough trouble chasing up these darn molehills without having you going round digging them up.' Tom felt his cheeks burning, which was odd because his body was suddenly freezing. Charlie Green had had it in for him since the day they had moved to the garden, of that he was sure. He was always giving him funny looks. Tom tried to speak, but his throat, which suddenly felt drier than the Sahara at noon, stuck tight. He never had been brilliant at getting out of trouble, just expert at getting into it. Charlie Green squinted darkly. "'Next time I'll have to tell your mum,' he growled. "'Now take that rag of yours and be off.' Tom fumbled as he gathered up the corners of his treasure rag. To his relief, Charlie hadn't noticed the array of plant bulbs that he'd dug up, which now lay scattered in amongst his earth treasure. Three handsome stones, a piece of broken green bottle, and a tatty old purse that had probably belonged to a child's doll. The stones he would keep and place in his box marked Tom's earth treasure, which sat in the grate of his enormous bedroom fireplace. Everything else he would throw back. By the time Tom nudged open the small gate separating his parents' small patio garden from the main communal gardens, Charlie Green had already refilled the mole hole and was now stomping angrily across the lawns towards his shed. Clusters of tiny earth mounds lay scattered all around. It had been a bad week for moles in Notting Hill. Tom's heart still took off every time he entered his first-floor bedroom. After their tenth-floor Hong Kong apartment, it really was a dream come true. His ceiling reached high like a private indoor sky. The narrow French doors opening onto the tiny sun-filled balcony stood tall as skyscrapers. And on the far wall a magnificent fireplace stood even taller than he was. But more important than all of these things was the view. Tom's new room looked out onto a vast, rambling garden that stretched as far as the eye could see. The garden, which was shared by all of the houses in the square, was filled with clusters of rhododendron bushes and sprawling oak trees whose branches seemed to brush the passing clouds. Tom pressed his nose hard against the French door window and breathed in deeply, still wondering about Charlie Green. Then, through his clouds of warm breath on the glass, he saw a small dog shoot out from a cluster of trees and race across the lawn towards the houses. Slowly, Tom's mouth widened into a grin. "'I don't believe it, Stell,' he yelled at the top of his voice. "'Harry's back!' Stella, who was lying on her bed next door studying her friendship bracelet, didn't answer. With her iPhone music on full volume, she was busy hoping that her friends back in Hong Kong, who would all be asleep now, had thought about her today. She also happened to be crunching her fifth fruit polo of the day. Lime green flavour, to be precise. The one that always made her ears tingle. Tom thinks he's in heaven, she had just written on her best friend Hannah's Facebook wall, but it's so deathly dull here, all molehills and boys. Stella didn't budge, nor for that matter did Tom, who was now leaning out so far over his balcony he was in danger of falling off. He was determined to see if old Mrs Moon would be at her gate to welcome her disappearing dog. Of course she wasn't. After all, she would have to be psychic to know exactly when Harry would choose to come home. Never mind psychic, all the garden residents thought Mrs Moon was batty. Her lost dog notices were pinned up everywhere, and she drove them all mad, phoning them up each time Harry went off, which was often for days at a time. Tom often found himself wondering about Harry when he was out digging. The little long-haired terrier's comings and goings seemed to be part of garden life, as did the snarling Charlie Green in the Mole Hills, and, of course, the dotty old Mrs Moon. But why did the dog keep disappearing? And exactly where did he go? As thoughts of Charlie Green quickly evaporated, Tom resolved to solve Harry's mystery by summer's end. Chapter 2
chapter two beneath the mound. I wonder where Harry's gone this time, Stella murmured as the sound of their mother's piano playing wafted through the morning breeze. Harry had been missing for almost a week, and Mrs. Moon was beside herself. As a result, so were most of the garden residents. Tom and Stella were sitting on their favourite mound of grass on the island. The island was a cluster of four oak trees in the centre of the garden, skirted by rhododendron bushes. Stella twirled her friendship bracelet, a present from Hannah when they had left Hong Kong. Neither time nor distance will break our bond, Hannah had said dramatically when she'd given it to her. How much those words meant now. I wonder where Harry goes every time, Tom said with a frown, as he picked at the mound of grass with his trowel. Don't do that, snapped Stella. If Charlie Green catches you, you'll be... Hey, what's this? Tom's eyes locked open as he sat staring between his legs at the ground. What's what? Stella leaned forward as Tom continued scraping grass off the top of the mound beneath him. I think it's real treasure, he shrieked. Sure enough, as Tom carried on digging and his eyes continued to widen, underneath they could see what looked like the rounded lid of a wooden container, a real treasure chest. Suddenly, Stella clutched Tom's arm. Ouch! Let go, will you? he squealed. Shh! hissed Stella, sitting bolt up and staring straight ahead. The bushes opposite rustled. Stella and Tom sat still as statues. If Charlie Green appeared now, they were done for. "'Must have been a bird,' whispered Tom, finally letting out a breath. The bush was still again. He looked down and carried on digging. "'It's a box, and it's got grooves on the lid,' he gasped. The rounded lid of the treasure chest seemed to go on forever as the patch Tom dug grew wider and wider. But then Stella's pale blue eyes widened. "'Tom,' she whispered in disbelief, "'it's not a box. It's a boat!' "'A boat?' said Tom. "'It can't be a boat, stupid. There's no water around here.' At that moment the bush opposite trembled violently. They really had had it this time. They knew Charlie Green's breathless snort anywhere. He was probably crawling through the undergrowth to take them by surprise. But then, with a final sharp rustle, the leaves ahead parted, and out into the clearing appeared Harry. "'Harry!' they cried. "'He's soaking!' exclaimed Stella." Harry took one look at Tom and Stella, then turned towards home and fled. "'Wait, Harry!' Tom began to take chase, but it was too late. Harry streaked like lightning, out past the rhododendron bushes and across the sun-drenched lawn, towards home. Mrs. Moon didn't know it yet, but she was in for a very pleasant surprise. "'Tom, come back, will you?' Tom gave up his chase about halfway across the lawn, just as their mother's voice echoed across the garden. "'Tom! Stella! Come on, we're leaving!' "'Help me with this!' Stella was dragging a log across the lawn towards the mound. "'If Charlie Green finds this mess, we'll be grounded indoors for a week!' Tom looked despondent. He had just unearthed the greatest treasure of his digging career, and here he was being told he had to cover it up again. "'But I want to get the boat out!' he protested. "'We haven't got time! We're going to Grandma!' said Stella breathlessly. "'Quick, take that end!' They shuffled three or four steps sideways, then lowered the log on top of the mound. Tom stepped back and kicked the log in frustration. "'Look,' said Stella firmly, "'it's no use making a fuss. We'll come back tomorrow and see if we can find out where Harry came from.' Tom's face twisted into a puzzled frown. "'What do you mean by that?' "'Well,' said Stella, tearing at the wrapping of her sweet packet, "'where there's a boat there must be water.' She popped an orange polo into her mouth and raised her eyebrows in excitement. I think Harry knows where that water is, and it's somewhere around here. Chapter 3. Dawn Escape Funnily enough, it was Stella who had trouble sleeping that night. Tom, in his room next door, was out like a light the moment his head touched the pillow. A boat, Stella whispered repeatedly. How on earth could it have got there? And why was Harry soaked to the skin? She was thinking how first thing tomorrow they would have a good scout around in the bushes when a hollow clank from somewhere outside made her sit up. The clock at her bedside read 5 a.m. She must have fallen asleep. Still thinking about Harry, she crept from her bed to her window. The sun hadn't risen and the garden was bathed in a grey early morning mist. Nothing. It must have been a dream. But then, as she was about to drop back the curtains, the clanking echoed again. Stella peered to the right in the direction it seemed to have come from. A high-pitched squeak followed by...